This video is brought to you by my ebook, Texting Women Like a Boss. The link is in the description. We have a question in the chat. And the question goes, uh, I agree with the kitty cats compete. Oh, so uh, this guy, Doc Love, he had a saying that he would say on his show, which was uh, kitty cats compete, meaning that women are oftentimes, they will like you more if they feel as though they are in competition with other women for your attention. That's why those of you guys that have never had dates before or have never had hookups or never been in a relationship, you have the stench of a guy that doesn't have a lot of women, which means by default of that, you become less of an option to her. So it's a weird trick of like, even if you haven't had a lot of women in your life, you have to learn to carry yourself in a way that says like, I can get women, but I'm choosing not to. It's my choice, but I could get them if I want to. That's a better vibe to walk with than like, I wish somebody would date me. That your whole body language changes and they are not attracted to that, right? But yeah, when women find feel as though they're competing for your attention and affection, they will typically fall for you a lot faster. As evident by even Michael Jackson's song, like, oh, I didn't want you around until some other guy wanted you. Like we all are in this thing of like, we will compete for somebody once we realize that other people want them. It's just psychologically how we're built. It is what it is. Anyway, he says, uh, I agree with the kitty cat compete, but did you ever get perceived as gay for talking to women a lot in front of other women or coming across as that guy who talks to everyone and that maybe the hot ones, quote, who are most insecure, by the way, think, well, he talks to everyone and gives all these women validation. So I'll just move on. Well, I'll be honest to the first part. Uh, I never had people think that I was gay because I talked to a bunch of women or had a bunch of female friends. I did have people question my sexuality because at the point that my dad died, all I had were female influences. I had a group under my mom. Uh, I had my grandma, my aunts, my cousin was, was a woman. I had my, my step granddad, but we, we didn't really connect like that. So because of that, I was unaware that I picked up a lot of female mannerisms. And that can happen when you have mostly female influence that you're being raised up under is that you're not aware that some of the things that you're doing are actually giving off to women that you could potentially be like on the other side of things. You know what I mean? You know? And so I, at 21, I had the opportunity to go on a five month uh, trip. I, I, was, I was in a touring uh, theater play. And so I was with five other guys uh, one who was gay, one who was bi, but the other four, the other three, because I was the fourth one, uh, were straight dudes. And I got to go out and see how do dudes actually interact with women in public? Because I wasn't getting any education on how to interact with women from women. Like, that wasn't going to happen, right? And so I had to go through that 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 time, period of time where I could be around other guys to actually get the lesson of how guys should be acting, how guys are interacting. This is around the same time that I started studying guys like Doc Love and David D'Angelo and other guys who had success in the dating world and knew how to interact with women in ways that women could not teach me. Because women are going to be like, be nice and be cordial and give flowers and say nice things. And I found that a lot of the opposite of that was what would actually get me women, you know, saying the opposite of nice things or saying the opposite of what I thought they wanted me to say actually got me better results. And that's part of being a man, of being able to say things, whether they agree with it or not, but you're standing on it, being able to be bold and make moves and ask for numbers and take action and risk rejection to get them into the bedroom. Like those are things that as I started to learn them and as I started to do it more, then that whole, are you gay label went way out the window, you know, but that took some time, you know, but anyway, so that's the first part of your question. The second part, uh, maybe the hot ones who are most insecure, by the way, think, well, he talks to everyone and gives all these women validation. So I'll just move on. I have found this is that most hot women that everybody thinks are getting guys aren't getting guys. And so you actually have a better shot at getting hotter women because you're talking to other women, because part of them is like, here's the thing. Let's say she sees you talking to like five or six other women in the party and she's thinking, oh my God, he's talking to all these other women. He must be a player. This is net. The player label does not take away the part of her that wants to be chosen. If you're talking to five or six other women and they're talking back to you, those other women are giving validation to the level of... Um, I can't think of the word right now. They're giving, they're giving proof. They're giving social proof. They're giving social proof that you are the guy that is worth talking to. And so now, because you've chosen these other girls to talk to, now she's thinking, but I need to be chosen also. And so that actually makes them easier to talk to. I'll give you a real story, right? 
I think I've told this on the, on the show before, but like years, years ago, I went to a party. It was a Halloween party. I was dressed up as Mario. It was amazing. And so when I got there, there was this one girl there that was like the hottest girl at the party. And when I first saw her, my first thought was like, you know what? Every other guy at this party is going to probably try to talk to her and give her validation. And so what I'm going to do for this next hour is not do that. And what I did, what I do, what I do in state, she was standing right over there. I started, you know, I made sure I was like the guy that everybody in the party saw. So I was going around talking to different girls and being flirtatious and laughing. The music came on and I was one of the few guys at these parties that like was not afraid to go out there and bust the move because I knew that even though all these other guys may be apprehensive about it and be like, oh, I don't want to show off this net, that like women want to see guys dance. And more importantly, if you can dance well, you got to think about like dancing is like like the mating call. Like in, in nature, like lions and all these other animals will do these movements that women, the, the, the lionesses and the, the female versions of that species will know like, oh, he's the guy to get with because he's doing a mating dance or a mating call. And so I would get out there. I studied Michael Jackson. I, I have a whole video on my channel you can see of me like doing dance moves and stuff, right? And so I, I can dance my ass off. And so I was doing that, making the moves, pop locking and doing all things, doing the, the moonwalk because I know how to do an actual moonwalk. And so I did all this stuff for like an hour. And then she was standing by the punch bowl. At this point, I just happened to be thirsty. So I walked over to the punch bowl to get punched. I'm not going over there to talk to her. I'm going over there to get punched. But she happens to be there. At that point, I just kind of say randomly into the air, oh, these tunes are, are pretty kicking tonight. These, this is pretty, pretty awesome tunes. I'm not saying it directly to her. I'm saying it out there. But if she wants to grab on to what I just happened to say to myself and start a conversation, she can do that. And guess what? She grabbed the bait. Oh, yeah, these songs are pretty great. Oh, yeah, they are, blah, blah, blah. I'm now starting a normal conversation. I didn't come up to her and say, you're so hot. You're so fine. Oh, my God, you would never talk to a guy like me. I was able to talk to her in part because she saw me talk to other people and other women for a whole hour and not come to her. And she was the last person. But at that point, she's now chosen. So what happens after that? We're talking. We're getting giddy. We're laughing. I sit down, and she sits on my lap. I didn't have to initiate that. Because why? Because now she's proving to me why I should have chosen her in the first place. Long story short, I got her number, I left the party, and then we were able to date for a while, you know? So, but all that happened because this hot woman who was a 10 out of 10 saw me interacting with other people, and especially the 10s. The 10s are like, but wait, that girl over there is a seven. Why is he talking to her but not me? Does he not think I'm an out of 10? What's going on? So it really plays to the fact that if a, if a girl knows that she's a 10, it's going to mess with her that you're not talking with her. And it's actually going to make her want to be more chosen by you versus, oh, he's talking to other women. So I guess I'll just move on. Like that has never happened in the history of forever. So hopefully that answers your question.